Welcome to the Hanif J. Williams Show. One of my intersections is sports, and I really wanted to have the my first episode in sports be something that I really love and I'm actively involved in, and that's high school basketball, basketball in a general sense, and all of the four major sports. Um, in my introduction, I mentioned that we'll be talking about global culture, we'll be talking about black culture. Also be talking about sports as well, which is the intersection of all of these realities that I've mentioned previously. And today I have an opportunity, and I'm so excited for this interview, Coach Chris Davis. You guys are going to learn about his life, his mindset, his thought process, how he arrives at his executive decisions, his players, his coaching staff, his legacy that he's building, and also his family as well. I think you guys will really appreciate this interview. It's the Hanif J. Williams Show. Coach Davis, welcome to the Hanif J. Williams Show. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Glad to be here. You know, I was telling you in pre-production that I don't think you understand how much I respect you and I appreciate you and how excited I am for this interview to basically just go into your thoughts and go into that mind of yours. I want to start off first with your coaching style. And you're just coming off of your another conference championship for you and your guys. Congratulations with that. Thank you. I was sitting next to Sean, who's, you know, obviously you know who that is. He's just a, an incredible, incredible person, and he's a Millbrook um, uh, fan, and he's an alumni. And he said something, you called a timeout, and I want to begin at this point. He said, Coach Davis is coaching the hell out of this game. Right. And so you are, I said, he is coaching, coaching today. Right, right, right. So my question to start off is that, are you a, you're a coach, but do you look at yourself as a manager as well too? Because that game that you that you coached for the, for, for the championship, that was an absolute masterpiece. I was sitting there and I watched a bunch of your games, right? right? I'm right behind the bench. Right. You and your family, and we'll talk about um, your wife here in a few. How would you describe your coaching style? Um, first of all, I think it's um, – I think people like playing for me. I think – no, they love playing for me. They love the way we do things. I treat them first as people. You know, I try to let them understand first that, that first and foremost that basketball is a game. Mm. So when we get between the lines, everything that's going on in your life is not important at that point. Mm. If you've got something bad going on at home, your grades are bad, you know, you and your girlfriend have some issues, mm. you can escape everything and just worry about that game. So while you're playing it, do it to the best of your ability, have fun, love the game, hustle, have effort, and then when the game is over, you've done your best. So with that being said, we don't make it an all or nothing thing. Mm. We make it, we keep it as what it is. A game's a game. So if if we're not winning the game or we're losing, you know, why can't we fight back? Why can't we why can't we battle? Mm. Why why would we ever quit in a game? Because we've got so many other things to worry about after the fact that when we go between those lines, it is all about the business of the game. So you're able to have fun, you're able to have energy, you're able to have fight because there's a lot more important things in the world going on outside of that basketball, mm. but that's where you can be safe and you can be, have fun and you can, you can be a kid and you can enjoy the game that you love since you were a little kid. And you've watched, you know, the Jordans and the LeBrons and everybody else, you know, do these things. So now you're out there doing that thing. Mm. So when I call a timeout and, or, or I'm getting the guys in an in a energy place, it's about the fun that basketball is. Mm. And that's it. That's it. Like, it's got to be fun. So – You'll see me sometimes like interacting with our, with our crowd, and I don't mm. talk to anybody else's crowd. But like, you know, a great play happened. I'll turn around, I'm like, man, that was beautiful. Mm. That was a great basketball. Or mm. we'll drop a play that works. I'm like, guys, man, that, our coach is something else, man. Mm. That guy, he called a great play right there. And of course, I'm talking about myself, just joking mm. around. But I want them to have fun with it because sometimes it can get so tense that everybody puts so much into it that the fun makes it fun. Mm. That's really, really powerful. I want to I want to stay in this space for a minute with your players. And you did have a moment with uh, with one of your players. And we'll talk about him in a few that, you know, time out. You kind of like pushed him, you know what I mean? Hit his chest. Mm -hmm. You talked about 
your players have in challenges at home and otherwise. Yeah. As a coach, do you take on a role as sometimes an uncle, sometimes a father? And can you talk through can you talk through us with that just for a few minutes? And not only that, I want people really to understand that these are high schoolers. These yeah. are essentially teenagers. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to the next level, but they may have some challenge challenges at home. Right. Like, and I think that they're sometimes missed with coaches. Can you talk us through that for a minute? Yeah. So, you know, when you're in high school, you're dealing with 14 and 19 year olds. Mm. With that, you're dealing with different cultures, different families, different backgrounds, different, you know, mom and dad situations at home. So what I tell my parents, I tell the kids going in, I am whatever they need for this time they're here. If they have a dad at home, I'm not trying to be dad, mm. but I can be I can be big brother or I can be uncle. Mm. If they don't have a dad at home, I can be dad. Mm. If they don't have a mom at home, I can help and talk through different things to try to put them in situations there. So with that, there's so many things going on outside of school. You know, we've had families sometimes that, you know, a dad isn't there or a mom isn't there or parents work all the time and you're having to be that for that kid. So... With every player on my team, I have separate meetings all the time mm. just to kind of check the, check the pulse, how things going at home, how you doing at school, how you doing with this situation, that situation. Because sometimes just having somebody to listen to you is so important. And if you don't have people that you can latch out to and listen to, then what are we doing this for? Mm. So my number one job as the coach at, at Millbrook High School and since, ever since I've coached any type of basketball is to mentor people. Mm. And I don't say just men because I have female managers. Mm-hmm. I've coached female teams in the past. So it's got to be everybody. It can't just be that I'm worried about the guys that play. Mm-hmm. You know, I have managers that have gone on in life to do great things, and, you know, male and female managers that are doing other things in life. And if I only locked into the ones that played or the ones that had mom and dad at home, then what will we have? Mm-hmm. So if we're not able to be there for them when things happen, you know, we've had situations where our kids weren't taking school seriously. So, mm-hmm. you know what, we shut the practices down. Or we've sent you home to get schoolwork done. Mm. Or we've met to discuss what these things are because there's a lot more to this than, than, than just the basketball. So I feel like school is, is kind of prepares you for what life's going to be like. Mm. So tardiness is not, not something that we take. Mm. You know, you're, not, you're late to work, you're going to lose your job. Mm. If you own your company and you're late to meetings, you're going to lose business. Mm. So if you can't get places on time, then you're going to lose out on things. So we put that in, in, in basketball. If you're late to practice, then you won't play or you won't practice. Mm. If you're late, then you're going to have punishments and things of that nature because they have to understand that. Mm. So when school and you're late, you're late a certain number of times, you get an in-school suspension or tardy, you know, suspended or whatever else. And a lot of kids are like, I don't understand why they're so big on these tardies. I'm like, because life, you have to be places on time. Mm. So if you don't learn to have a schedule, have a regimen, have a way of doing things, and then sometimes things are in a tough place where you're going to have to say, hey, I need to make a call because I'm late. Mm. If you're making that call every day, then they're going to get tired of it. Mm. But if it happens once or twice because of situations, people don't understand. But if you don't have that 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 foundation put in first, it won't work. Mm. So we've kind of learned that what was best for us is to try to to grow these men and women up by by setting a, setting an example by being there, holding them accountable and ourselves accountable, and making sure that we stay with what we're going to say. Mm. So you have to be strong enough to lose your best player if he if he's not getting the schoolwork done. Then he's sitting out mm. or he's not playing at all mm. over. He's our best player. So I'm just going to deal with it because wow. if you don't do it right, if you don't do it, then it's not going to happen. Wow. If you decide to wait to the last minute and you let these, let these situations take advantage of you, then at the last time where you're going to need that kid the most, they're not going to be there. Wow. And if you don't fix it, then that kid is going to be forever broken and you're going to see them 10 to 12 years later. And maybe you putting your thumb on it right then might have stopped it. Mm. And that's kind of how, how I feel like helps us become great is the games are great. You know, winning a lot of games great. We've you know, been very successful mm. on the court. But off the court, to me, we've been the most successful. Wow. Wow. That's, that's really powerful. And you just illustrating the maturation process in developing these players and not only the players, obviously, you do have some ladies on your staff, young ladies on your staff as well, too. I want to talk about 2021 for a minute. Mm-hmm. 
I was at that championship game. Yeah. I don't know how they let me in with yeah. COVID, but they yeah. let me in probably because I know you. <laughs> there you go. Um, 2021, you go 19 and 0. You're undefeated. Two two part question, Coach Davis. How often do you think about that that year? Mm-hmm. Number one. And what is your relationship with that crew of guys really? or the staff? Yeah. You know, we, we don't want to be, we want to be, I want to conclude everybody yeah. as well, because even the cheerleaders or, I mean, I mean you yeah. know, I mean, they, they, yeah. they won a championship as well yes, too. And we really respect them right. and, and, and the cheerleading uh, coaching staff. So those two part questions. Um, so just talk me through that. Uh, first of all, it's one of those things where, you know, you, as a coach, you dream of of greatness and championships. And, you know, in the AAU level, I won a national championship and, you know, one state championships and stuff. But my goal was was to eventually one day be able to hold that trophy up and be the state champion. So mm. to get that is something I think about often. You know, you know, we have two banners hanging in our gym. So every day at practice, I see it. Mm. You know, it kind of reminds me of that great time and that tough time through how, how tough COVID was for everybody. But to get through that, undefeated with those with those kids and those men that helped me as coaches to get us to that place. And my wife, man, my wife was amazing. Mm. My wife um, got COVID in December, mm. and they gave me a choice of the school system back then was like, they were so worried about how much, um, you know, getting people sick and everything else. So the, rule, so the choice was quarantine by myself for two weeks mm. or stay at home for 24 days and be at home with her. Mm. My wife said, no, wow. those boys need you. So I stayed in the hotel for two weeks during Christmas break, you know, during the holiday break. And two weeks I was away from my wife and the team. So I had, you know, my manager, um, you know, Sierra Demery sent me videos of practices and I couldn't watch them because I was so, couldn't be there. And, you know, but, but she sat, my wife sacrificed Mm. us, you know, Christmas, you know, holidays, hanging out for our kids, for mm. our team. You know, you know, your brother, you know, you know, my guy, my brother, um, you know, the sacrifices he made, you know, health wise and being there and being 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 present for all that stuff we had to do. My my coaching staff, you know, those guys putting in their time and effort you know, coming in every day with the masks and doing all the tests, and we're doing we're doing temperature checks, and we had to ask all these questions every day. Our coaching staff went above and beyond to make sure those kids were safe. That's awesome. So there were so many teams that had to get shut down because of, of COVID. That didn't happen with us. Mm. We 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 were we we made sure every day that everyone that stepped in that gym was ready to be there because they were they were they were healthy enough to be there, and we didn't take any shortcuts with that. Mm. So those men were so active in getting making sure we were good, and then my our female manager Sierra and my niece Casey, Casey Wiggins, they 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 made sure everything was clean, everything was put away. They made sure we used separate ball. We had separate little little caddies that we clean, and the caddies had hand sanitizers, wipes, gloves, and their own bottles of water, unopened. Mm. And we would, you know, get them cold, and we'd put that in the Gatorade, and everyone had their particular container. And we walked around like a hospital unit. Everybody had their own (laughs) separate one that they would walk into games with. Mm. And we sat separately. We wiped chairs down. There were so many people that put in for getting us to that place that when that horn went off and and it it looked up and we had two more points than any other team, there was a second – there was probably a 30-second window that I have no idea what happened. I like my wow. my mind just went away. I was in another zone. Wow. Like when they say you hit a euphoria space, I was there. Wow. And the next thing you know, this guy that looked a lot like you <laughs> grabbed me on the court. <laughs> and it kind of brought me back to life yeah. because I literally, after you dream of how things are going to go, when that horn went off, and I was like, hold up. Did we just win the game? And I'm thinking – all the stuff we went through to get to that place for us to win. And then I'm, you know, I look up and this guy that looks a lot yeah, like you yeah. is grabbing me on the court. And I'm like, who is this guy grabbing me? I'm like, yeah. Oh man, it's Anif, my guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's I don't awesome. know if you remember this part, and I have to add this. You grabbed me so tight, and I was trying to spin and find people. I unbuttoned my jacket and spun out of it, and you had my jacket. And then this other person grabs me. 
And I'm like, get off of me. Mm. Get off me. And it was my, my wife. She goes, hey, fool. Hey, it's me. I was like, oh, my gosh, come here. That's Because of what we went through to get to that place. So when you say, when you, when you bring it back to, to the first question, when I think, when you say, what do I think about, what I think about that event, I think about it often, especially during the season, because I want, I want these kids that we have now to get that same feeling and get that same, I want them to experience that euphoria that we were able to experience in 21. But it's one of those things where you can talk about it, you mm. can say it, mm. but until you're in it, until mm. that, that you're in that moment, you're in that mode, and everything you've worked on at practice comes for fruition and you make that thing happen, mm. and everybody can go, you know what, Coach? We did exactly what you told us to do, and we were champions. Mm. When that happens, it's it's a it's a it's a feeling. It gets gets me goosebumps even thinking about the fact that if we're able to do that with this team here, and they're able to leave Millbrook, we always want our seniors for their last game to play for a championship. Wow! Imagine that, Hanif. Imagine you're in high school, mm. and you know right now that your last time ever playing whatever sport you're playing is for a ring. Wow. It's for a championship, for the legacy you get to leave to your school, and then you then you you get it. Wow! So your last time ever wearing that uniform, that jersey, that singlet, whatever sports you play, that you get to walk off that court for the last time as a champion. Wow! Wow! That's Coach D. That's some powerful stuff. I wanna I wanna have this particular segment, and this is so important. And I'm gonna look in the camera first by saying this: it's that. You know, I call her the first lady. And uh, mm-hmm. Miss uh, Lady Amelia, if you're watching this, mm-hmm. know that I do call you the first lady. So this segment is going to be about you. This is completely unscripted, of course. Yeah. This, your wife, she's at every game. Yeah. yeah. Um, before I get into the question, I want to say this because we are in the sunset of black history. And I want to mention this to you. You don't know how much it means to me to see you as a black man. Wow. Walk wow. into that, <clears throat> these gymnasiums with your wife beside you, beside you. I know your days are super early and they're super late. Yeah. She's there. Sometimes you guys dress like twins. I mean, which is which is awesome. I, 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 she probably dresses you because yeah. you you are well, super I, dripped out. Well, I dress her. And, and okay, yeah, 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 and, yeah. But yeah, but yeah, I, I tried it. She says I'm the I'm the I'm the bougie one. Oh. So I'm the one that does all the the dress and stuff. But yeah, we 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 say we have this thing called a mechanism. We call it mm. the mechanism is that we we think a lot alike. You know, we're different people, but we have a lot of the same likes and loves, and we're, we don't argue. Mm. We talk. We have conversations about things. But we'll look up. Even yesterday, we were getting ready to get our day started, and we were both in our closets, and we came out in the same exact top. Wow. And the same bo- bo- bottom combination. And she said, she always tell me I'm trying to dress like her. And she said, that's great. No, nah, I can't. <laughs> I can't say it this time because we literally, I hadn't, she said, I literally was thinking about that same thing, and, and that's just us. So... So yeah, man. So is she? And I appreciate that. Let me let, let me finish my thought because I, I definitely want you. I definitely wanted a segment specifically for her. So, how much of? And there's so many questions that I want to ask. So I just put it like this, and you can just build off of what I'm saying. Right. How much of a role does she play in your non-coaching life, if I can say that? Mm-hmm. And the success that you have, and you are incredibly successful. You're right. humble. You don't you don't go around, you know, beating your chest, right? right. You, you don't even have your championship ring going. No, sir. I mean, you know, but you have the most important ring going, obviously. Yes, sir. So how much of a role does she play in your success overall? You can talk about your personal life as well mm-hmm. and how she shapes that and also your and also your um your 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 career and your basketball life. My wife is the single reason why I I am able to be successful as a coach. Wow. I am able to worry about the things with my players, my parents, my faculty, my staff, because I have a wife at home that supports me, supports the time I spend with the kids, Mm. practices, traveling to different events and stuff. She goes with me when she can to different events. She goes out of state with us. She goes to different events. But – 
her her care about the kids and about me doing well with the kids is very important to her. We don't have mm-hmm. kids ourselves. She has a daughter, and have, we have two grandkids. Um, wow. And, um, you know, the time that she spends, she spends a lot of time by herself, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So no one understands the sacrifice that she gives mm. for me to try to be great as a coach because there are many times that, you know, her day, she works from home. So she's at home from when I leave at 5.45 in the morning till 9.30, 10 o'clock at night, she's at home by herself. Mm. So no one knows that. No one knows that what that's got to be like to be there all day by yourself and your husband is out saving the world, mm-hmm. so to speak, and you don't get any other conversation with them other than a call or a text or things of that nature because I'm so busy trying to coach and do other stuff that I have. So if I didn't have that stable home environment where my wife uh, would allow that to happen without it being an issue would be a problem. I knew the way my life was set up, you know, being at Millbrook, I've been at Millbrook 25 years. Wow. That if I were going to get married, I was going to meet my wife at Millbrook. Mm-hmm. And I met my, my my wife at Millbrook. Wow. My wife used to teach at Millbrook. And actually, funny enough, the job I had, I was working in, um, you know, behavior support. And my wife came in as my boss. Wow. Yeah, she was my boss. She was, like, in charge of me or my supervisor. So going from that, and I was in a situation where you know, my dad was going through some things and I said, you know what? Um, you know, I said, me and my dad are going to go get bat. We're going to get baptized. Mm-hmm. And Amelia and her daughter came to the baptism. Wow. And I was like, man, that's crazy that she would, you know, I just met this lady. She would come to the thing. And and she was always very supportive of me at different things. And it was, in 2011, Millbrook made state championship game. And she came to the game. And mm-hmm. I was like, wow, this is crazy. Like, she's, you know, being supportive. So... When we started dating and then started getting into a relationship and I was doing the travel, I was coaching AAU and stuff, and she would go with me on tournaments. And she loved basketball. She loved sports. But she was really supportive. And when I told I told her, you know, when I got when I was gonna go for the varsity job at Millbrook when it, when our, our head coach resigned, um, she she said, Well, if you get the job, can you just do me a favor and can you stop coaching the AAU to travel stuff? Mm. Done. No problem. Mm-hmm. Now, I did pick up women's tennis <laughs> that I love, and I coach women's tennis at Millbrook as well, which I'm I'm, I'm actually a, a great women's tennis coach because I'm really good at driving the bus. Yeah. I'm good at <laughs> watching girls win or lose and say, okay, you're in this space. And I'm good at sitting down and watching them play mm-hmm. and getting applauding them, mm-hmm. make sure they got they got they're hydrated. That's awesome. Because that's all you do. That's but awesome. my wife is so supportive and so caring and so loving and if one of my kids has a problem and I come home and talk with her about the situation, she's giving me solutions of how to help and how to fix the situation. We had a kid that um, we went on a trip and everyone had a nice, buffy, puffy jackets and he didn't have one. Mm. So we were kind of talking to him about, it. he needed a jacket. And she was like, well, we should, we should just buy him one. Wow. I said, well, he said to wait because he thinks his parents are going to get him one. But she was ready to do that. Wow. So that's the kind of person she is. Like she, she is the person that is going to give you her last. Mm. And she's gonna find a way to get to get the next. Wow. So I try to reward her by as much time as I'm off the court to spend time with her. We take a lot of trips, we go out in the country, we travel because she deserves that because she gives me so much time to be the best Chris Davis that you get to see on a Tuesday night or a Friday night. Wow. Because well, of her. Some nights it's like, hey honey, I know you're tired. Just stay home tonight. And then she she drags herself to the game because she knows that I need her there. Mm. Game starts and I'm looking around. I don't see her. Like a lot of times, I'm like, "Hey, what's going on? Like, <laughs> like, like, where is she? What's going on?" And I have sent Sean, my cousin, to go find her. Like, hey, mm. find out where my <laughs> wife is. I need to know where she is just to make sure she's in a good place because she makes me. Mm. And if I didn't have her, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now. Wow. Wow, that's 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 really powerful. That's love and basketball here, the, uh, the North Carolina version. I want to do something real quick. I want to talk about um, just a few things. I got some notes here that I'm I'm going to read here. And um, I, well, let me do this first. Let's talk about this team here. Mm-hmm. And because I've seen a lot of your teams over the years, yes, sir. Um, I have never been this connected with this particular team. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mention each and every. 
each and every player on your team. Okay. Because I want them, because they're going to watch this, right? Yeah. I want each and every one of them to get their just due. Okay. Okay? <clears throat> so you have Cooper Roy, you have yes. Joshua Bowen, mm-hmm. Jeremiah Bates, Jacob, mm-hmm. incredible mm-hmm. night he had mm-hmm. Friday night. Uh, Blake, I love Blake. Bartney, Alonzo, mm-hmm. Hester, I think he's going to definitely have an incredible year next year. Kyrie's been awesome. Mm-hmm. Jaden Whitaker, mm-hmm. Mitchell Watson, watch, uh, uh, Watson, mm-hmm. uh, Alex Olander, I call him AO. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got Coy, you got Josh, and you got Evan. You forgot one. And one I'm going to mention. <laughs> all of you all, let me say this too. Like this is this is Big Brother Honey, right? Coaches rise his brother, right? I really love all of you. You know, I talk to you all the time, um, and I wanted to say all of you guys' names because when people watch this, they can Google you, they can look you up, they can follow you on IG. I really appreciate that. Colt Langdon. Yeah. You've coached a lot of great, great players. Mm -hmm. How special is Colt? Yeah. And what do you think his ceiling is? Mm, that's a very good question. First of all, um, sometimes, you know, I've been blessed to, you know, to coach a bunch of great kids, a bunch of great players, a bunch of great athletes, a bunch of great, like, 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 like guys that have it, like the, the it guys. And I've coached a lot of guys. And um, there are, you know, and, and this is one of those where when you say it, you know, you, you got some, you know, you, I'm going to have some people calling me up <laughs> mad about this situation. I have four guys in my uh, my Mount Rushmore of people I've coached, mm. and no particular order. When I say this, Chris Clemens, mm. kid by the name of Shavlik Randolph that played. He ended up playing at Broughton and played at Duke. Played for the Seventy Sixers. Played a lot of lot of years overseas. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you know, he was like one one of my first guys that I had that was like that guy, like that 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 dude. Um. Silas Demery, who's playing down in Georgia yes. right now. State champion. Yes. And Colt Jacob Langdon. Wow. That, th- th- those are my th- the four guys that I can say they all have it. They have that it thing. They don't like to lose. Mm. They, 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 they battle through. They, they're coachable. They, 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 they're tough. Mm. They, they, they love their teams. They love the competition factor. And they love to shut people up. <laughs> they love when people talk junk or talk that they're not good or whatever else, and they love to silence them. Mm. Now, sometimes with some of those guys, you got to help them by getting them to be quiet when they're doing it. <laughs> but he has that gear. He has that that alpha in him that makes him special. He has that thing that makes you want to get him the ball. He has that piece, that, 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 that thing that knows that he's going to be playing professionally for money mm. when he is ready for that. Mm. Those four guys that I've mentioned could be CEOs. They mm. could be billionaires running a, a major organization, a major company. They could have their own business, or they could be setting the world on fire playing professionally, all four of them. Mm. One of them, I'm sorry, two of them are doing that right now, and the other two, one's in college and one will be in college in a couple years. But they have that it thing. And when they're out there, you're better. Wow. When you're at practice, you're better. When they're spending time away from the court and they're putting that time that, that most people might be on playing a video game or TikToking or, or trying to go out and see how many um, people they can talk to and followers they get, they're in the gym getting their work in. Mm. Those four people, uh, perfect example, Shavlik Randolph. When I was working in college, I was working at this community center. His mom would call me and be like, you gonna, please, Shavlik won't leave the gym. So I get to the gym. He's making his mom guard him in the post so he can work on his moves. Wow. Okay. Chris Clemens dating a girl. The girl's like, Chris is making me go to the gym and rebound for him. Because he's got shots he's got to get up, and he's not, he don't care. He's not doing it until he gets this. Mm. Okay? Silas Demery, we're at practice. Silas is early, leaves late, stays, gets the other work in, gives my practice, goes to another workout, goes and gets some rest, you know, goes and gets some treatment, comes back, coach, was the gym going to be open early tomorrow so I can get some work in? Mm. 
Colt Langdon shoots early, shoots late, goes to a trainer, goes and gets gets hyperbaric chamber, goes and gets that, comes back, shooting early, shooting late. Those kids have this thing where they've made this a priority. Mm. Now, in their life, all great students. Wow. All focused, all very personable, but their job they've made is the basketball. Wow. And that's where he separates himself from people who like to hate him, hate on him, mm-hmm. and say he's, you know, he's overrated and he's this and that. You know, he's heard every chant you could imagine. But he had a block the other night. Oh my goodness. That he blocked it so hard off the backboard. He hit himself in the face. It hit the backboard again and hit another person in the face. Mm-hmm. And I've as the as the as nastiest block I think I've ever seen live. Yeah, you had a crazy reaction to that too when on the Be- sideline. Because if people understood, they always think about him shooting or, you know, you know, how McGrell shoots or, you know, we're throwing a lob for a dunk. But for him to give up himself to go block a shot like that, that shows it's way more important for him to get the win than how many points he scores. Now right. he's our all time leading scorer and as a junior. But for him to do that, that just shows that it is way more important for that kid to win and do the things he's got to do to do that than how many points he scores. Yeah. And those, that's the difference. The, one, the, the great ones, the score, the points are going to come natural. Yeah. But the defense, the leadership of their team, how they care about their teammates and their coaches, the love they have for the game and what they put into it mm. is way more important than what the, than what the points are. Mm. This and, is, this is, and that's this the is, difference. This is incredible. I do want to say this before we pivot from uh, Colt. I had the opportunity of getting to know uh, Mr. and Mrs. Langdon, his parents, yeah. and I think also his aunt and his uncle as well, too. Right. These people are like always smiling. His dad is kind of intense, so I, I yeah. understand where Colt gets that high <laughs> motor from. I mean, his dad is, uh, and Mr. Langdon, hey, you know, I appreciate you. His dad played football at UVA. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. He played UVA, yeah, and played O line. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't look like it, right? Yeah, he, he doesn't look like it. Yeah. Yeah. I know he's a th- he's, he seems to be a tough cookie. Very yes, sir. super intense. He's a, he, he's a he's a quintessential professional and his mother is just kind of reserved, but she's always happy and smiling. I want to talk about these maniacs for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Um what's going on over there across from you? I mean, it's a lot man. of man. I mean, that energy there is man. if if we ever had a six man, I mean, yeah. I want you to talk to those yeah. talk to the maniacs for yeah. a minute. We have the best cheering section. Um, bar none. I mean, every high school has their 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 nicknames for their their group, but our maniac group, they love us so much, and and they love they they love that we they can see that we're having fun when we play. Wow. They can see the energy, the fight, the dive, the the, the effort. Like um, we, me and Kyrie were talking about warm ups, you know, coming out for the game starting lineup, and I said, Kyrie, you know how crazy it would be. If you did a backflip when we did warm up, <laughs> that was your through. idea. Yes, it Listen, was. Listen, just real, just real quick, Coach David. So stay with the black backflip for a minute. So we're sitting. I got my brother's wife and Coach Coach Jamal Williams. Coach Rise is my brother. For anybody that doesn't know, we basically look like twins. So he's got the ponytail and he's like three three inches bigger than me. I think I'm six one. I think he might be like six four, six five. So I'm sitting. I'm sitting right here. Um, uh, Jennifer, who's Coach Rise, or Jamal Williams, is my sister-in-law sitting right here. Your wife is sitting this way. Sean is sitting right here. Kyrie does his backflip. I lean back. Well, Sean is pulling me this way. Your wife is just like, hey, what's going on? And yes. We don't want them to hurt yourself. Yes. But this was your idea. Talk, yes. talk through that. We were talking about senior night. I said, you know, senior night. I said we should have fun because, you know, Jacob has his little thing. He, him and him and Jaden run and do this high five kind of jump thing in the air. I said, Kyrie, senior night. I said, you know how cool it would be if for the maniacs and for the fans you did a backflip? Wow. He goes, I'll do it, coach. He said, I can do it. Am I allowed to do it? I said, yeah, you can do it. I said, as long as you don't do anything crazy, yeah, you can definitely do it. Yeah. He goes, I'm going to land it, coach. I said, I, I have no doubt wow. that you're going to. So he didn't practice it any of the week. Like we knew it was kind of going in. So when he did it, the crowd was like, whoa, what did I just yeah, see? Yeah. Like, oh, my God. And then, like, you know how, like, lineups happen. They're waiting for the next person to come out. And um, one, I heard one of the fans go, hold up, did Kyrie just do a backflip? <laughs> and they were like, man, you, you didn't see it? Oh, my mm. God, that was crazy. And he said, Coach, man, that was so much fun to do that because nobody knew I had that in me. Yeah. But for you to have the trust in me to let me do it, then somebody might look at it as vain or 
or being, you know, kind of a, you know, like a like a look at me moment. It wasn't that at all. It was that if you knew that kid struggle mm. and you knew what it took for him to get to that place, to be here and be a senior playing wow. for us, I should have let him do three down. I should have let him do five somersaults and a round off if, if that would have been what he needed. But it was more to give that kid the confidence that he can do anything. Mm. That's mm. why. Not because I was trying to have him show off. It was like, you know what, man? You've earned this. You've earned the right as a senior to on your senior night do a backflip. So from the outset, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to you talk about this backflip and your thought process behind it. And I said I wanted to get into your mind from the outset. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely brilliant Mm -hmm. for you you to have him go in a space where he's free, where he's not confined, where he feels like he can play the game. And that that I believe that was a Nightdale game, senior night. Mm And which was a very, very important game. Right. Because it's a it's a get back game. Yeah. And for him to be free, I think he was very, very consistent that particular game. I don't know I don't it was so much emotion, I can't remember everything. Right. But I do want to really stop and appreciate and put my thumb on a pulse of that genius coming from you mm-hmm. and your player, you your player accepting the fact that he can do this, something that's you know, you we you know, Millbrook right. is the is the they think that the top of the hill, they think that they're better than everybody. They don't understand that there is a tremendous humility there. Right. Um, I, I want to go back to Colt real quick, just to use the Colt as an example. Colt made a mistake and you took him out of the game and you gave you chewed him out. Yes. I mean, it, we know who you are, but so you also have that too, where people from the outside looking in, oh, they just let Colt do whatever he wants to do. Right. No, this is not true. Right. You took him out of the game. And this has happened multiple times, but yes. this particular time I saw you, you took him out. I don't know what he did. He may have, you know, had a defensive <laughs> lapse, whatever the case was. He didn't rebound, box out, whatever it was. But you you let him have an earful. Yes. And I said, well, he's going to bring him back in. And I'm looking at this, okay, a minute has went by. I think, did you want him to sit, and I'm, I'm mentioning Colt, but I definitely want to go back to uh, to Kyrie and, and that space that you're in. Did you let Colt sit in his thoughts? Because I thought, uh, you know, 15, 30 seconds, uh, Coach Davis is going to bring him back in. Right, a right, minute right. went by, I think like a minute and a half, a minute 45. Yeah, We're like, yeah. okay, all right. The game was, you know, pretty close. Kind of yeah. like need him need him both ends of the floor. Right. Did you let him? Did you let him sit in his thoughts from that lapse that he had? I Actually, it's so funny you say that. I, with him... Sometimes I have to let him understand that we need you to be who you are all the time. Mm. And when he lapses or he's not, he takes a bad shot or he's not getting back on defense or he looks tired or he's not in a good space, sometimes I have to let him know, hey, you're sitting here right now and we need you. You're sitting here over here with us. I can't go out there and play. Rise, Jew, Coach Blau, none of these guys can go out there and do the things you can do for us. We can't go out on the court. You have the ability to do it, and why are you wasting the opportunity? So why don't you sit over here with us and think about it a little bit? Mm. Why don't you sit over here with us and just kind of say, what would you rather be? Would you rather be out there in the mix getting it done? Mm. Over here with us where, you can't, where you're helpless. Mm. Because I tell the kids all the time, at practice, I can stop the game, practice anytime I want, and stop something, put a drill, and I can, I can make it where we put the ball on top of the backboard and let it sit there, and then we can blow the whistle, and then we can go get it. Mm. In a game, I have no control because mm. you guys have to do, even when I draw something up, y'all got to execute it. So if you're not executing or you're not being what you need to be for us, you're better off over here with us watching. And when that happens and you're a dog like he is, there's nothing worse than putting a dog in a cage Wow! and having them sit there and they can't go out and play. <laughs> Imagine the invisible fence. You put an invisible fence in the yard so a dog doesn't leave, right? But that dog knows if it runs up to that thing, it's going to zap him and it's going to sit back. So when that dog is sitting there and it can't go and it can't run and it can't go do what it wants to do and you got to have it watch, it, that, that, that is a major, major factor to make that person be right. And he doesn't need many of those. But every now and then you have to remember he is 17. Wow. He's a kid. He's going to make mistakes. Mm. He's not perfect. You know, the world wants him to be sometimes. But – He's a he's a high level basketball player that every now and then needs to be tuned. It's mm. like a great car. If you have a Ferrari, mm. you can put the best gas in the world, but every now and then you have to take it to the shop, mm. right? Wow, it's a high performance vehicle, right? It is one of the beautiful you know beautiful vehicle. You know you pull it up beside other cars. Oh man, this car is great. But every now and then it's got a knock. It's gonna tick. The battery's gonna run, gonna run dead. Mm. Something's gonna happen. When you're gonna have to tune that car up, mm. and 
he's one of those guys. He's one of those guys that eventually he's going to run run a little low on fuel. Mm. You got to need to put some new gas in it, or you need wow. to change the oil. And he handles that well. He handles being talked to and coached very well. And you were going about his parents, and I have to add this. I asked his mom one day, I said, how are you able to sit in the stands and smile and have a good look on your face when everybody's yelling all this bad stuff at your son? She's awesome. Man. And she said, you know, Coach, we've been dealing with this since he was a little kid. Mm. He was taller than everybody else, so we used to have to take our birth, our birth certificate to prove who he was mm. and his age. And everybody used to say he sucked, he's garbage, he's overrated. And we just we just learned how to watch him and support him and not worry about mm. the other stuff. So imagine that. Imagine you're, you're there watching your son mm, play, mm, mm. and people are just yelling stuff. And most times, they were the only white kid and white family at the gym. Wow. And they're being yelled at. Mm. A lot of times, they were the only ones. Mm. And they're just sitting there, and there you know who they're there for. It's like yeah. there's three white people in the gym, <laughs> right, yeah. a, a kid playing, and a mom and a dad. Yeah. But all you're hearing is, that white boy sucks. He's garbage. He's this. He's that. And it's like, what did he do to you? Yeah. So now he's 17, he's a junior, he's a leading scorer at a high school that's been 101 years around. He's the leading scorer ever. You can't take that from him. Mm. You can't take from him the fact that he has 20-plus Division I offers mm. and that he's a great student, and he does everything he's asked by his team. He's been a team captain for the last two years. Wow. You can't take that from him. Yeah. But they get to go to the games and watch their son and know they've heard it all. Mm. They've heard everything you could imagine. And they get to go there and just watch them. Mm. So for them to have that skin, that level of toughness built up, they've instilled it into him too. They're definitely, the Langdon's are definitely a class act, and I alluded to that earlier. I want to I want to stay with the team for a minute, but I want to go to this coaching staff of yours, which is which is just yeah. really amazing. And then yeah. I'm going to get to some uh, a quote of yours, and then we'll start to uh, we'll start to get to the fourth quarter of this interview. Um, so this coaching staff that you have, you coach you. Coach yeah. Blau, uh -huh. Coach Rise. Coach Rise is this firecracker of yours. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, my brother. I mean, he's just he's just amazing. He's he TNT. He's yes, not, I don't know about firecracker. Yeah. You got to be a little stronger yeah, than that. Yeah. <laughs> he's that Coach Blau. He's like this country <clears throat> pickup truck. Yeah. I'm not going to get emotional. Yeah. Everything's fine when he's he doesn't say too much, but when he does speak, it's profound. Coach Jew. Kind of like the younger version of Coach Coach Rise coming into his own, super super. Uh, I, I know he relates to the youth. Can you talk through each and every one of those personalities of your coaching staff and how they compliment you and how have uh, how they have contributed now, to this perennial powerhouse that you ahead? Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna go backwards. Okay, I'm gonna start with Larry Sorrell first. Larry Sorrell is my 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 bookkeeper. Okay, Larry Sorrell. Well, it was an, a high school official where he, he officiated basketball, baseball. And volleyball a number of years, and he just retired from re re um, refereeing recently, where he's one of the most highly decorated um, refs ever in our state. Wow. So after he finished finished, um, finished refing, he called me one day and said, hey, Coach, um, I have been a big, big, big fan of yours, the way you run your program, the way you guys do things, and I would like to be your scorebook keeper if you wouldn't mind. Mm. Just call me up out of the blue. Wow. I said, you're done. You're, you're done. I'm firing my niece, and you're the new bookkeeper. So I had to give her a conversation, tell her, "Hey, I'm sorry. I got a, I got a, I got a state renowned official who wants to do our scorebook." Mm. So this man, since um, the year four one championship, has been my bookkeeper. He's he goes, awesome too. He goes to our events. He travels with us. If the kids need something, he's there for them. He supports them. If they need a ride. If they need to be, be this or that, he helps them. We had a situation where a kid was in serious need. He said, give me the list. I'm going to go to Sam's, pick up all that stuff. And that's we're unbelievable. Bring it to that, that, that's that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable, Coach D. So now let me go to, to Gary Nobles. Gary Nobles, tall white guy with glasses. Yes. Gary Nobles is my freshman coach, but Gary does everything for our program. If you see him during the game, he's helping with uniforms. He's he's making sure the bench is in a good section, making sure we have all this and that. He makes sure I know where my keys are. But but Gary is old school. Gary's one of the best players in high in North Carolina high school history. Mm. Um, he's in the Cary High School Hall of Fame as, mm. as a basketball player. Played college at Lorne Ryan, and he loves these kids so much. 
that he gives his time and energy to make sure we're in a good place where he could be doing so many other things. He could be with his family, with his grandkids, but he, the time he spends with us, cancer survivor, had, 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 wow. um, had surgery um, in September, and we have 5.30 a.m. workouts we do. So Gary and I do those because your brother ain't getting up for those yeah. workouts. Your brother ain't making those 5.30. <laughs> so me and Gary do them. Gary goes, has a surgery, gets back, and Gary's back out there with us. Mm. Like after, you know, he was actually clear to That's get back. That's unbelievable. So, so you name those two guys there that you don't even think about. They're on the bench. Mm. Then you get to Tim Blau. Tim Blau's been with me for 14, 15 years. Mm. We were doing JV together. He's done varsity with me. Um I had taken a stint away from JV just to st- focus on varsity. He stayed with our JV coach. Um, he's a head softball coach at Millbrook as well. And um, funny enough, he's from Illinois. Wow. But but lived in uh, Michigan. So he's really a, a Michigan guy. Yeah, but he is definitely an F-150 <laughs> guy for sure. <laughs> Tough, hard-nosed. Um, but he loves those kids. Um, like I said, he don't say much, but when he says it, it is it is, it is profound, yes. profound what, what he's talking about. He gives us our toughness, like our rebounding, our hustle, our effort. He's the guy that sticks on that. Like he's the one that gets on me about us not rebounding mm. or not caring enough about that part, that particular part of the game. He's the guy that gets on me about that. Julius McKinley, this guy, a couple years ago wanted to be coached with us. I wouldn't let him. Mm. You know, when I was a sister, I was like, nah, he can't be with us. He he, nah, he, he's good. He'll be somewhere else. So yeah. I finally let him come on. Former went to Millbrook, played at Millbrook, um, uh, moved to Charlotte the year before we won the championship. You mm-hmm. know, for work. So he missed out on that on that run. So when you were in the stands in twenty one, he yeah. was there with you. Yes. And one of the most depressing thing, one of the saddest parts about that day for me was we came out locked from at halftime, and he was walking from the concession stand with food for my wife and for the other people. And I was like, you're supposed to be with us, bro. Mm. You're not supposed to be over there. You're supposed to be on here with us. So he moved back to Raleigh this past year. He gives us an energy of fight. This man watches every game of the team we're going to play, gets all their sets, all their actions, all their things, and he installs them for our team. And they got to guard them. And he he takes that very seriously. So when we're able to guard and defend and we're taking away things, he, the stuff he puts in is 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 helping us get to that place. So he has a very important job in making sure we're in a good place. And then when, when we're going against it, you know, that's where good programs have a person that can lock in and can make it where it's so important that everyone understands their role mm. and their job of how to guard and how to, how to defend. And then your brother. Mm. I made him the JV coach. Mm. He didn't want to do it. I made him the JV coach. He has loved it. He's embraced it. He has an awesome JV team. Yes, too. but he, but he but he loves the fact that we call it a job interview. Mm. So imagine this, Anif. We tell the JV kids right now you're on a one year job interview. Mm. So every day you're being assessed for next year. Mm. So if you're going to make varsity or not make varsity, this is your opportunity to show who you are. Mm. So imagine you go on a job interview. We get to see your best. You're, we're going we're going to meet your representative on that. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Da da da. Nah. Mm. With this, we got a year-long interview. Mm. And at the end of the interview, either you're going to sink or swim, but he's giving you that opportunity to be what and be who you're going to be. So then for varsity, he gives us our energy. Mm. He gives us our our, our give a crap. He gives Mm. us the, 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 the initiative that if you want this, and he he likes to show his ring all the time. Say, hey guys, I don't know if you notice or not, but uh, I know what it takes to get one of these. Yeah. If you want one of these, do what we're saying. He's the guy that you know. Everybody thinks at the beginning of the game that energy that he gives us before when those guys run over and hit my fist before we start. Mm. He gets those guys so motivated to go, and then in game, you know, we're just looking at at how we're playing body language, energy. He knows those kids so well. Think about the time he spends as an artist, as a father. Wow. You know, as a brother. Wow. You know, and then to take the time to spend with us. So Jen and the kids and you and all your brothers and sisters that you guys have and your mom, for him to spend so much time with us coaching two teams. Wow. Two teams. It, it's amazing. I, I call him the I call him the, the better version of me <laughs> because I used to coach JV and varsity at the same time. Yeah. So I said, well, man, I don't know. I said, I've done it. So I know what it's like. I said, but I didn't have to do it as a music artist. 
mm-hmm. as a father of three, mm-hmm. and then as a brother of as many siblings as he has, I didn't have to do it at that. Mm. I luckily haven't had a million, mm. and my family, but I couldn't imagine being that mm. with all the other stuff. So when you think about my staff, that's what we are. We are a group of people that work well together. I trust them. They trust me. It's never me. It's always we. I'm, I only take credit for losses. Mm. I learned a long time ago. That's good. That's when good. you can take credit for losses, even with the kids, I, I lost this game. I didn't do a better job preparing us for this game. When we win, we won. Coach McKinley, great game plan. Coach mm. Blau, the rebounding helped us tonight. Coach Rod, our energy was on, on 50. Mm. Gary, when you went, when, it, when Colt got blood in his uniform and you got him back in 30 mm. seconds and we need him back in there, amazing. Larry, you told me that Alex had four fouls and we got him out in time to save him for he, th- that they, they get the credit. All I want, all mm. I want is when the last game happens, is that we're able to host a trophy. Mm. I don't care about any of the individual accolades. I don't care about coach of the year. I don't care about any of that stuff. All I care about is that our team goes out and is successful. That's all I care about. And then after the game, y'all did a great job. Mm. Coach, you, mm -mm, no. If we didn't put this in together, then we wouldn't have this. I lost. We won. This is is, is so powerful. And I'm going to ask you to repeat that that law statement again before I get to my next thing, because I really want to sit on this for a minute, because as you're saying it, I'm still trying to process it because it moves me so much. I mean, talk about that, how you take I just want you to repeat that for a minute, that that right. loss part again. Yeah, um, I, I've, I've learned that when you lose a game, everyone wants to blame somebody. Mm-hmm. And let's say it's late. You miss a shot to, to lose the game. We lost the game this year to New Hanover, and Colt missed a three that could have tied it up. Shot a pretty deep one, you know, late in the game, whatever. There were so many things in that game that happened that if we had done better, we would have possibly won the game. Mm. So for you to put it on one play or you put it on one situation, it's not fair. So it is so much easier for me to take credit for every loss than to put it on one kid or a kid didn't pass the ball to somebody, so we lost the game because of that. No. The mm-hmm. game's too long for that. There are too many things that happen in a game that you're going to put one point as the reason why we lost. Wow. But I'll tell you this. If we get a big block or we get a, a loose ball, we take a charge late in the game, that play helped us win, mm-hmm. us win. We didn't win the game because Joe took the charge. We won the game because we rotated over, we got in the position, and we took the charge. Not, not Joe. Joe didn't win the game. Because Joe needs four of the people out there with him. Mm. And he needs and he needs bench support. He needs coaching help. He needs a little bit of luck and some energy. But when we lose, when we lose, Coach Davis can do a better job. Coach Davis can watch filming and do a better job and fix the situations and make it better. And now it's not, now you're not riding home thinking, I blew the game. I lost the game. I'm a grown man. I can handle it. Mm. Maybe as a 17-year-old, you feel like you let your team down if you lose. Wow. So give it to me. I can take it. There's no loss that I've ever had that I felt like, man, I probably should quit coaching basketball. (laughs) I I suck at life. This is bad. But a kid has. Mm. A kid has lost Mm. the game and thought they lost the game for the team. And I don't allow that. Wow. I don't allow a kid after a loss to think that it was their fault. Mm. That's that's awesome. So – um. 10 out of 11 lately. Every time you score yeah. 80 points this year, you're, you're just undefeated. Right. This, this group here, and also all of your teams now that I think about it, they're very well disciplined. They're not rattled. Yeah. Um, you know, you're getting everybody's best shot. Yeah. Um, you're like the Carolina Duke of this particular area. I mean, yeah. everybody plays you. It seems like the basket is bigger. When, when, when people play Millbrook. Yeah, yeah, it does. This particular team, mm-hmm. you guys can slow it up. Mm-hmm. You can run fast, which mm-hmm. I know you like to start your games fast. Yeah. You can play the zone. You can play man. You can press you. <laughs> I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about what is the personality of this particular team? Because I'm watching how versatile you are. Mm-hmm. 
And I'm watching this this bench is you can go deep if you want to. You could play six or seven if you mm-hmm. and it's almost like I'm looking at the other coach and it's just like we can't figure this guy out. Right. Colt's not on. Alex it has twenty five points. Right. Alex doesn't have twenty five uh Colt doesn't have um as far as the point wise for the championship, for the conference championship. Uh um Jacob goes crazy. Mm-hmm. What what is the theme of this team? Number one and number two. How privileged are you to have this rubber band that you could stretch yeah. or you can make yeah. small? That's Talk good, about that for me. That's a great way of saying it. First of all, I always try to set up our teams. I don't care who I've got that we don't have a best player. Mm. And that's the key. Because think about it. If Colt's having a bad night or they're taking him away, the double team and team triple team in him, the other guys understand they've got to step up. So what happens to me is if you've got one guy that's going to average 40, let's just say, what if he's not making shots? You're going to lose. Mm. So we kind of put it years ago that we need to make sure that every night we had a crew of guys playing well. So if one wasn't, the other guys would pick up the slack. So if they're double teaming, double teaming, triple teaming Alex, then that's going to be open up more opportunities for Blake or for, or for Kyrie or for um, Colt or for Jacob or for one of our guys off the bench. So it puts us in a situation that if you take us take this thing away, we can we can still score. It's important for us because if you know these teams study, they watch film, they see things we like to run, they try to take things away. We had to always come up with new ways of doing it. So, you know, kind of inventing a better mousetrap kind of thing just each time out. And and honestly, we've got some really solid players on this team that that have very defined roles and they're good at those roles. Mm. So Sometimes we have to kind of get instill a little more confidence in them that they can do these things because it doesn't have to necessarily have to go through Cole. Mm-hmm. Doesn't have to go through Jacob. Doesn't have to go through Alex. So we have to make sure they understand that, you know, do what you do and do it the best of your ability is what we talk about. So we talk about if you're a driver, then drive aggressively. If you're a shooter, knock down your shots. If your job is to get in a rebound and defend, do it better than anybody else. But you you have a place and you have a way you can help us. And as far as the rubber band mentality, different games call for different situations. Mm-hmm. And so what we talk about is that, you know, I meet individually with every kid on the team mm-hmm. about different things. Okay, this game coming up, hey, we're going to need you to be this. Hey, this game here, this game right here is not going to be kind of your your game. You know, like mm-hmm. who we're playing and how they play, I don't really see that for you, but I'm going to need your support on the bench tonight. Mm-hmm. And either you do it or you don't, but, you're being, but I'm going to be honest, but I'm going to be nice about it. Mm-hmm. And I learned a long time ago that, that – if, if you can be honest with everyone you deal with and you shoot the kids straight, then they can do nothing but respect it. Mm. I think that's powerful because even even in our pre-production, I always try to be graceful enough to ask my guests, is there anything that they don't want to talk about? Because, you know, we have a free-flowing <laughs> conversation here, and you actually did say that yeah. off camera. You said, you know, I do things honestly. Yeah. I want to mention a few questions before we before we before we conclude this interview, Coach D. And you may not this you may not be in a position to answer this, obviously, because you're in a position and you uh, we, we want to be respectful to Millbrook. Is the next level knocking at your door? Um, no, mm-hmm. no. But it's not like I want that. Yeah, I don't. I love where I'm at. Mm-hmm. I love high school. Like, I don't want to coach in college. Yeah. It is too crazy. <laughs> it is too crazy. I have friends that coach in college, and they're buying new houses, and they're moving, and, you know, their coach gets fired. One of my good friends, he was coaching out of school. The coach died during the season. Mm. So they had another coach take over the rest of the year, and then the, the school fired the whole staff. Mm. So now you and your wife – and your kids are uprooted and moving somewhere else, trying to find a situation somewhere else because of something out of your control. You get a job, and your team is doing well, and it looks good on the high level. When you're a high-level coach and you get fired, they pay you. They pay you off to leave. Mm. Like the coach at um, Jimbo Fisher, coach of uh, Texas A&M, got fired, and his buyout was $77 million. Wow. That's insane. Now, that's him. Not his assistant coaches. Yeah. So if you're a head coach at a high level, oh, it's great. But if you're an assistant, 
and you get fired or your team decide, or the coaches decide, hey, we're going to go another direction, now you're trying to find where else, that you, where else you can get to. I know coaches that started at nice D1 level are now D3 assistants. They got a part-time job working somewhere else to make ends meet. Mm. No, I'd rather be where I'm at. I know every year I'm going to get a crop of 14 to 19-year-old kids that are going to come here. They're going to learn. They're going to, they're going to experience. They're going to get better, and then they're going to move on in life. And then if I've done my job the right way, five, ten years later, they're going to be inviting me to their wedding. Mm. Or they're going to say, hey, coach, man, I just had a son or had a daughter. Or, hey, coach, we just moved back to the area. Or, hey, coach, can we grab dinner? Mm. Or, hey, coach, thank you. Because you build relationships. You can't build relationships in college because now it's a one it's a one year maybe situation. Mm. But in high school, I get a chance to meet these kids, get to know them, get to spend time with them. And I'd rather do that. So, no, next level for me, I'm at my next level. Mm. Mm. Powerful, powerful. When's the last time you cried? Wow. The last time I cried, you're going to be, uh, oddly enough, was I caught myself Friday night. Wow. So after we won and we ran over, and, um, and I'm going to get, I need to make sure I say this when I say it. It, is, it, it, it bothers me to no end how much hate our kids mm. and program get mm. from us, from people that look like me. Mm. For, for black people to hate me mm. when I'm a great person, I'm a nice person, mm. all I do is coach kids and try to make them better. Mm. The hate that me and um, Rise and Ju and our kids and our, our, our program gets because, you know, we're successful, you know, bothers me to no end that people would hate that. Mm. You embrace hate, so we're, we're used to it, but it bothers me to no end. So we're over and, you know, we get our, our plaques and I hand them to Jacob and I go over, and they're taking pictures. And, and Jacob's mom, who's a doctor, comes over, and she's going to take her picture. And there are kids yelling, F you, F Millbrook, and they're throwing middle fingers up. That's hard. In front of this boy's mama, who was so proud of him for winning this Completely game. Completely unacceptable. So I walked away. I left the group. I left the picture. You know, you know you'll see. I, I think I'm not in none of those pictures. I walk away, and I walk over, and I see y'all. And y'all are cheering and jumping up and down. And I got teary-eyed because I had I held myself. I looked at my wife and I pointed and I said, honey. And I, and I just said like a heart and I just like I got a little teary-eyed because that's why you do it. Mm. You do it for those people that were standing up cheering and pointing and so happy and for those kids mm. because, because we've been successful, people hate us. Mm. And they hate us. Because I don't know if they're because they, they want to be at Millbrook. I don't know what the situation is, <laughs> mm. but they hate those kids to no end. So this th these people were yelling and middle fingering and everything. I'm like, nobody on that court did anything to you, but you still would be that hatred and have that much hatred toward us is 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 very hurtful because mm. those kids didn't do anything to you. They just went out and played basketball and they won a game. The game ends. We get a chance to go. Oh, but playoffs are very blessed about that. We're going on. Wakefield, great team. Get a chance to go, go for playoffs. So who's the loser there? Mm. Both teams are going on to have a chance to win a state championship. So for you to feel that, compelled to be that way, and I get it so often. I get so much hate about me and about how I do things and people that make farce narratives about me recruiting kids and how I do this and do that. And the truth of the matter is, I will honestly look at this camera and tell you, I do it the right way. Mm. And I do it the right way for a couple of reasons, but the main one is I'm a black man. Yes, sir. And if I don't do it the right way, I'm going to get in trouble. Yes, sir. If I don't do it right, I'm going to mess it up for the next person that wants to be the coach at Millbrook or wherever else. So I have to do it the right way. Mm. So when people hate on me, that's, that's whatever. But the kids didn't do anything wrong. Mm. The kids that go to Millbrook are supposed to be there. Mm. I promise you that's the case. But it bothers me to no end. So when you asked about me crying, I looked up and I saw it. I saw just how happy our fan base was. And I, I, I teared up a little bit because I was like, man, this is why we do this. You know, you know, forget all the haters. Mm. But the fact of how much they knew, how much time, energy, effort that I spend trying to make us great – it's it, it it just bothers you, but but mm. it's not going to change what I do because mm. mm. it, it gives me fuel to be honest with you. 
This is powerful. I didn't think that my question was going to was going to inspire such an answer like that. And I'm deeply moved. I'm ha- halfway teary eyed. We're at the fourth quarter of this particular interview. My last question to you: You're inside of the gym. Yeah. Practice is over. Mm-hmm. A young coach, Chris Davis, walks in. Mm-hmm. What do you say to that young coach? I tell him to embrace every opportunity you spend with these young men and Mm -hmm. women. That you sit back, the conversations off the court, the bus rides, the flights, the hotel stays, the trips to games and practices and things. Embrace those small things. Don't forget them. Because the kids you're dealing with, everything you're saying and doing, they're hanging on to every word. Mm -hmm. I would also tell them, to go and visit your other players in college as much as you can. Mm. I went to go see Gabe Serta this past week. Now we had a game. Gabe on, was awesome. Too. We had a game on Thursday, mm. so I went up on Wednesday, and, and the coaches ran practice for me while I went up. So Gary and Larry and I went up, and after the game, you know they lost the game, but he's starting as a freshman at, at Lenore Run. So we go up, and after the game, he came out and he's talking to everybody and everything. So Gary and and Larry leave the gym. And it's just me, him, and, like, two other people. And he gives me this big hug and goes, Coach, we did it. Mm. Thank you so much for what you did for me. Nobody that believed in me. Too, yeah. He said, nobody believed in me. You stuck with me. You got me here. Wow. And the coach before the game, he said, Coach, man, you were right. The kid's a dog. He said, Coach, he, he talks. The kids listen to him. He said, doesn't make every, you know, he's not perfect. He makes mistakes. He said, but you know what? I can coach him. I can tell him he messed up, and he, he acknowledges it, and he keeps it moving. He don't hang his head. He don't pout. That lets me know that we are doing things the right way. And you notice I said we. Mm, mm. We, because it takes Rise, it takes Jew, it takes Gary, Larry, Tim, mm. and Chris to make that happen. Wow. So when he tells me, thank you, I say, no, man, we put this work in. You did it because you, you had to do it, but we did it. So I would tell my younger self, to make sure you continue to stay with those kids. Chris Clemens is in France right now. Before mm. he left, we had a long conversation. Mm. I talked to my players often because I want to make sure they're in a good place. And I would just remind the younger version of me to keep those relationships mm. because that's why we do this. Mm. This has been an, uh, an incredible interview, and I want to thank you again, Coach Davis, and I want to say congratulations on another championship conference for you. Coach of the Year again. Um, I, uh, you, I was not Coach of the Year. Oh, you wasn't? I was not. Well, I, I, I was. What did I see of you? You wasn't Coach. Oh, they gave it to. Uh, they gave it to someone else. Yeah, they gave uh, it to another coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, was, and 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 just so you know, I, I thought that coach. I thought that team had a he great. He was awesome. Great season. I talked to yeah. him too. Yeah, yeah, yeah great guy. I, I, I thought and, he was. And yeah. the funny thing about Coach of the Year is, I told my kids that it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me. As when, you know, and this happened to me, um, you know, three times total. But when you make it to the state championship game, right before the game, they call the head coach out and they give you a plaque symbolizing your coach in the state championship game. Mm. I said, that's what I want. Wow. Because then 32 minutes or how many minutes it's going to take is going to determine if we win a championship or not. But the one I want is the one they give you before that championship game starts. Bigger picture, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah because yeah, yeah. because – the conference coach of the year is great. And you know, we won that last year. I don't I don't begrudge any guy. I think every coach in our conference works their tail off. They coach their kids. That's awesome. So when you give a coach of the year award to me, it's it's okay. It it's what what does that give you? Mm. What does that give you? The coach of the year in our league lost in the semifinals of the of the, of the conference tournament. Does that mean he's not still coach of the year? Yeah. Team the old team just out. They beat him. It wasn't the fact that he's not a great coach. So I think when you when you when you accolade it like that, I don't need I don't need that that accolade. What I need is for my kids to get the respect that they deserve. Because, Perspective wow. because because they're gonna give out a coach's award, give out the coaching staff award. Mm. You know, mm. give a staff because mm. none of us do it by ourselves. Mm. So give me a staff. Who had the best coaching staff? Wow. Now if I don't win that, I'm gonna be real mad. <laughs> But as far as head coach, believe me, I, 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 I definitely applaud 
whoever, whomever they decide gets that award. And I voted for the guy who won it as well. I'm fine with that. That's great. But it's way more about these kids than me. Such a class act, Coach D. And um, I am just amazed by you. And I got an opportunity to get to know you a little bit better in these uh, this hour or so that we've been sitting together. You have a playoff run, uh, playoff run coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope, wish you luck, and I'm praying for you. Of course, I will be behind the bench, oh, yeah. of course, oh, yeah, hollering and screaming, losing oh, yes. my voice. Um, but I want to, I want to say to you, thank you. If you have one, a few things you want to say, I'll, I'll <laughs> leave it. I know my producer is giving me my signal. Yeah, I, I'm gonna leave it up to you to, to, to sign us off here if you want to and. Uh, I, I greatly appreciate this, and that I learned so much my own self from right, this. I mean, right. I feel like I want to suit up and go to practice, right, right, you know, uh, right, coming up tomorrow. Right. But, um, but if you want to say last final thoughts, and go ahead. Well, I have two things. One, first of all, we when you're when you're when you're a married coach, you definitely need to make sure you let your wife know how much you appreciate them. Mm-hmm. Your wife, your kids, you need to let them know how much you love on them, thank them. Anytime you can bring them around, it you want to have them there. So if the kids. You know, they don't have to aspire to play play the sport or whatever you're coaching, but just spend time with them. Let them know how much you love them and care about them. And number two, I I just it really it really bothers me that we as black men have so much issue with other black men that we can't be supportive and respectful of it. Mm. That as a coach, I get hate from us mm. and they don't know me. Wow. I've coached players whose their friend played at another school and they would tell the person, hey, man, Coach Davis is a great guy. Like he is. I'm telling you, my son. No, nah, man, that guy, he's this, he's that. And he's like, no, I see it every day. Like, like you can ask my son, like he'll tell you Coach Davis does not talk badly about your school mm. when he talks about preparing for a game. He doesn't dog your program. No, nah, man, he's just not a good person. He's like, you don't know him. Mm. So that 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 is something I wish we were better at is giving people their flowers and their respect and not necessarily feeling like because I don't know it it's bad. Mm. Other than that, just allow these kids to go out and be be the best they can be. Coaches coach, players play, and let's just build these people up to make make America and make our lives in this world a better place. And I want to say this as I end it off, as I think this interview with uh Coach Davis, championship coach, he's uh, head of a perennial powerhouse. I think that to see the humanity in this, and uh, I think we should reach out. I think we should come together because I am a proud black man, of course, and and we are in the sunset of black history. Um, I think this may air um, probably after black history going into March Madness. But I think it's very important for us as black men and as just as sports fans in general to support each other and not to hate on each other and throw each other shade because we do, all of our kids know each other. They play AAU together. So it's no need for any of that. And for the display that took place um, Friday night, I think it's just completely unacceptable. I do not support that. I missed it for, I think I must have been celebrating. I, I missed that whole thing. But I did notice that you wasn't in the pictures. But I just want to say thank you so much, Coach Davis, for this. Again, good luck with the playoff run. I think you guys go very, very deep. Hopefully state championship is our, well, obviously our ceiling. And, and then I'll add to it. The reason mm-hmm. why I had to step out of those pictures because I couldn't be faking the picture. Mm. To hear the, what those kids were saying and doing in front of us, I wasn't going to steal the joy of our players of enjoying their moment, but I, my face was going to definitely show mm-hmm. the fact that they were saying saying and doing some things that were disrespectful. Mm. And I felt like it was better for me to turn around and celebrate with our fans. That's good. That's awesome. So, Coach Davis, really appreciate you. This is the Hanif J. Williams Show.